is in crisis, financial, spiritual, physical, crisis, all around us. The Earth herself is in a crisis. She is telling us she is hurting and she needs to be loved. Just like she is here for us, we have to be here for her. This may sound scary, but there are solutions and we, we need nothing more than ourselves and the way to make this work beautifully we have what it takes and we have it in abundance. I only suggest that we be proactive. Our brain must say to our heart, let's do this and keep on that. It's a natural phenomena to receive the guidance that we are. We are actually the wave of loving universal consciousness, the wave of energy that is us. Uh, and it is very, beautiful when you get into that receiving of that guidance you'll feel it everyone will feel it it's very wonderful uh, I'm so honored to have this uh, platform if you will to express what I've learned uh, in my lifetime and I'm ready to uh, to express those those things right now right here we are one that's the beautiful uh, message that comes through me and this is the purpose that I feel privileged and honored to to present is we are all one forever beings it's only four words but in those four words it says so much it's so powerful to know that not just think it or believe it but to know that with maybe a capital K how we are the creators or co-creators of the entire universe it's all one and it's all connected which we can show in science, but more importantly, we affect it with every thought, with every feeling, with every move, movement, with every, you know, sigh or moan or song or, you know, jubilation or every, every emotion is, is in it. These are how we are nourishing our souls on this magnificent physical plane that we've co-created and that we continue to co-create from moment to moment. It's called quantum physics, um, and, and, it, and it's, it's a beautiful thing to behold. I'm Stephen Sipes, and this is my master class. It's funny about the word master. I had a teacher that would call us all masters. And I would always think, mm, are we all masters? And pretty soon I caught on to it. And that teacher was quite wise in saying that we were all masters because heck, we are all masters. <laughs> so yeah, I can say I'm a master class teacher, whatever, any, anything, you know, the words are not the important part. It's, it's how do we feel about mastering something or anything you know this is this is the real question uh, what are we doing w where are we you know my my granddaughter Ruthie 13 uh, sings a beautiful song um, once upon a dream ah she's, you know the, the family leaves the big city climbs up to the top of the hill builds a little house by a stream goes fishing you know <laughs> and planting you know <laughs> They're eating by themselves. They, they left the city and at night they light a fire and they look at the stars and it's so beautiful that the song is, takes you into the universe. And, and there's a 13 year old who's doing this. The city's games they would not play. The city's rules they did not know. Up in the mountains far away.
And my 11-year-old daughter, Esther, is so much like that too. She's, she's making up her own words to songs. This is the beautiful thing of the, the children today, our, our most precious thing we have. You know, we, we love how, how spontaneous they are, how in the moment they are. They are the, you know, the leaders, a little child shall lead us. And um, I, I think one of the wisest thing I could say to you and to myself is for all of us to be our little boy and little girl selves, to go back into who we really are when we giggle and when, when we laugh and we roll down the hill, and, you know, and we have some fun and let go of all this seriousness. Um, life today, everywhere is way too effing serious. It's just too, too much. It, we all get, uh, I don't know, stressed out, that's the word. And we get old from that. You know, we age really quickly when we're stressed out and it, and it affects our, our health. So yeah, to be in our little boy selves and little girl selves, is, uh, to be children uh, is a beautiful uh, idea and uh, I remind myself uh, that it is very important to stay in my little boy self and my spontaneity and my happiness and my joy. I love the word joy. to feel that we are here, each of us, for a grand purpose, and that we chose to be in these bodies. We chose our parents. We chose the, you know, to work out the next echelon of our involvement. Uh, each of us is here to, uh, to express that. And the sooner we come to uh, understanding our purpose, uh, the more in line we will be with it, and uh, the more we will be able to uh, express it. And that's why I'm so thankful to be here today uh, on a platform, if you will, uh, to express my purpose. Um, and my purpose is very simple. And, and this is a good thing because as my 11-year-old would remind me, Daddy, keep it simple. Otherwise, you know, nobody's going to understand it. So my purpose is to be a conduit of spirit, to be a conduit of love, if you will, of compassion, of understanding of deep feeling and oneness. Uh, when I walk down a busy uh, street in a city, uh, I look at the people and look in their eyes and I, I look at myself. They are me, I am them. And that's beautiful. I am Steven Sipes, and if I had just one minute to tell you why I'm here and my feeling of being guided to be here, would take me back to my very early childhood in Manhattan where my, my mommy bound her breasts and went out to work uh, in the name of women's liberation. And um, I was comforted by Odaria, who was our wonderful house lady, house person. And uh, she would put me in a warm bath and bathe me and hum. She would always be humming and smiling and caring for me. It was so beautiful. And in those moments, I, I learned that uh, I was alone. And I was so thankful to have someone there with me and to, uh, to be with me and to share all the joy I had, and all the feelings I had to be in a, alive and in a body. I was thrilled to be alive and always have been. And, she somehow brought it out to me how I'm here with everyone. They are my family. The world, the universe is my family. And that's something that's stayed with me all my life in this lifetime and maybe has been with me in many lifetimes. So I had to just take a deep breath and I, I don't think I'm different than anyone else. I, I grew up one of the boys kind of thing and I still feel like I am one of the boys. Um, just a regular guy and I don't, you know, uh, preach or stuff like that, but I am beautifully guided and that's something that I feel is something I, I would like to present and, and be. We could call it self. It's another word. Small s self or I call it capital S self. 
<clears throat> and I particularly like the capital S self because then it acknowledges the grandness of self and uh, it, it acknowledges the realization of how, how grand we are. And these are words that you know, could make people wince and all of that, which I understand. I don't want to go you know, off the deep end, so to speak, but we each are individuals and each have a grand purpose and we're here for that grand purpose. The longer we understand that and the deeper we understand that, the more we can contribute and not only contribute to outside, but inside as well, because that's also one. When we give to someone else, we're giving to ourselves. And when they give to us, they're giving to themselves, you see. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, thing to give to a charity. It makes you feel good that you're helping some poor starving children somewhere. Uh, it's a nourishment that we need to be able to give. So charity is very important. Uh, it's wonderful to have a pet and, and love that little cat or that dog or whatever it is. Uh, turtle. My daughter wants a turtle. Uh, this is just being one with the animal kingdom. When one animal represents all the animals. I, I have a, a vineyard and when I go in my vineyard I can hold on to the one vine and say very powerful words. I could stand up tall and take some deep breaths and hold that plant and say, from the Lord God of my being unto the Lord God of your being. Indeed, I give you my strength of, and love of life. I bless you. I want you to flourish and be happy and drink in all the rain and the sun and produce the most beautiful, glorious grapes and so on, I go on and on, and I get it all emotional about this one plant. And then at the end, I say, and may all plants be blessed with the same emotion. So what we give to one, we give to all. That's the point I just want to make. Um, and that is why when we choose our words, um, and words are important, um, we choose them that they go out to more than just who may hear them. They go out to the universe. We're all touching that universe uh, in what I call the loving universal consciousness, L-U-C. It is a wave that we can give to proactively and take from proactively. There isn't one of us who doesn't need some help sometimes. There isn't one of us who hasn't been sick and depressed and upset. You know, we're all human. And we get those things. We just lost our dog 16 years, and we were all, you know, bereaved. Oh my gosh. And we reach out to the loving universal consciousness to, to give us comfort. And sure enough, I got an email from my friend Carol, who showed me a, a beautiful uh, excerpt about um, what she called uh, the, the Rainbow Bridge. Rainbow Bridge. So your animal is happily gallivanting in this beautiful uh, environment with all the other dogs and cats and, and, and the trees. And, and one day when you come over <laughs> and he or she sees you, they're going to run like crazy into your, jump into your arms. And you and, and your pet will be reunited and you'll never be departed. Now, that was an answered prayer that Carol sent me that beautiful rainbow bridge image that I could see my, my fozzy boy, my, my dog, coming to me one day when I come into that realm. It's, you know, these are just little things, but they help us. They help us each. We, we are each each other's uh, teachers. We are all each other's teachers. There is no one teacher. There is no one uh, messiah. Uh, we are all the messiah. In fact, the oneness of us makes us all one messiahs, <laughs> if that's a word. Uh, and I think it's time for us to um, step up to that, to that calling, uh, even children. Uh, I even would say, especially children take it upon themselves to know 
how grand they are and how beautiful they are. Um, one of my, um, well, I have many mentors. One of them is uh, Rudolf Steiner, who has uh, shown us how to grow plants in a beautiful way. We, we plant by the moon, we harvest by the moon. Uh, we call it biodynamics. <clears throat> and I incorporated that beautiful uh, oneness with earth into our uh, winemaking from the grapes. And it's been a tremendous, I would say, reward um, in that our wines are winning the top prizes in the world. We just won uh, an award in France, top 10 in the world, biodynamic uh, white wine. And it's, it's a, uh, it's a triumph for, you know, my, to, to say that my guidance really does mean something, okay? It's not, in, in other words, it's not airy-fairy, it's not, you know, I'm trying and testing it. I'm, I'm working in the material plane with my guidance <clears throat> and manifesting it on the material plane. That's the beauty of, you know, wearing two hats, is that one, I'm, I'm, I'm open and receiving my feminine receiving to hear the guidance and feel it, live it. And two, I'm also, you know, a business person who has to, you know, buy a machine or pay the toll or whatever it is, you know, make sure my credit card is paid up so I don't get a bad credit rating, whatever it is. And those things help you to balance everything and then it's all one big balance. So. <clears throat> Following our guidance and, and, and our grand purpose and acknowledging how grand we are, uh, these are all ideas that, uh, and, and messages that I would love to expound upon in great detail. Uh, I, I feel that each and every one of us can really benefit from it. Uh, Einstein had some wonderful sayings, another one of my great uh, mentors, uh, in saying uh, the, the problems we have today cannot be solved by the minds who created these problems. And this is, in fact, if I may read something from my book just quickly. Um, I was invited to, uh, very honored to be invited to a, a world um, visionary, a visionary uh, council, uh, visioneers, um, <clears throat> by this uh, Owen Anderson PhD and Canada Medal, uh, who wrote something beautiful about my book. I'll, I'll just tell you what he wrote there. Is uh, quote: "You have done a beautiful job in explaining general system theory to the reader, in particular the recursion principle. That is, that each system both contains subsystems and is in turn part of a larger system. In the acorn is a giant oak tree. Moreover, you have explained neurolinguistic neurolinguistic." programming perfectly. How we define and use words is of utmost importance, especially words like God, consciousness, and how we label and view ourselves and those around us. Well done, Stephen. And I was very happy to have that from uh, Mr. Anderson. And he, he introduced me to this visionaries group, which uh, I was quite uh, honored. And, and uh, we had a conference just last week, and I sat there on Zoom for one hour and 40 minutes in Lotus, like I am now here, um, without saying a single word. And at the very end, Mr. Anderson comes on and introduces me and puts the book up to the camera and says, this is a book that Stephen Sipes wrote called All One Era. And he points to this, realizing the glory of who we are. And they asked me to speak, and I didn't know, so I just opened the book at random, which is the beautiful thing about being open to being a receiver, just random, right? I just went, what can I say? What am I gonna do? I didn't know what to do. Here's these people from 12 countries represented. These are all PhDs and you know scientists and all these fancy people. And I, I, I was so beautiful to, to just discover this little paragraph. This is the third paragraph down on the page. And I read it aloud. Acknowledging the well-accepted premise that all of our emotions evolved from the basis of either fear or love, 
is an important step toward our ascension into multidimensional consciousness. You will know, capital K, when you are guided, capital G. In spite of being the most advanced technical civilization in our recorded history, we are presently in one of the darkest times in all of history. Never have there been so many millions of lost souls and so many tyrants, so much greed, want and destruction and flagrant ignorance of our divine unity, capital D, capital U, or of our dominant all-knowingness. This is our moment of glory, our carpe diem, our seize the day opportunity. Another one of Einstein's greatest things is imagination is more important than knowledge. Uh, and that's what we need to understand about ourselves. It's important to have knowledge. I'm not putting it down. Both of my parents were college professors and they were full of knowledge. What is it that, what is it that we really have that's, that we can really give and that we can really thrill to? What is it, the joy, joy factor? What is that? That is imagination. That is letting go. That is me sitting on a magic carpet and conjuring, and I love that word, conjuring it lifting off. And I'm looking down, and there are the hills and the lakes. Oh, and where would you like to go, Steve? Hmm, I like the sea. Take me to the sea. I want to see the dolphins. I want to see the whales. I want to be in the fresh air and the salt air. I want to dive in and be with the whales. And that's where we just go there, you know. That's imagination. That's being in the moment. That's uh, the dream state in, in the waking state. And there are civilizations who feel that the dream state is the real state and the waking state is not. We are made up of those dreams and it's why we are evolving. And to share that with each other is a, is a wonderful First Nations tradition that I adore and, and respect. Um, I was also invited to, uh, to be a part of a... <sighs> to talk about this is maybe we save it for another time. But uh, I'll say I have tremendous guidance to understand my dreams and to write about them and to think about them and to act upon them and, and be one with them so to speak. I don't write them down. Uh, sometimes I come back to them three and four days later, which is weird. Uh, and sometimes I have to just jump out of bed and uh, be them and, and think about them and go into meditation about them. But the dreams are uh, very important for us to uh, recognize and understand. And, I, and they, they, they're part of the guidance uh, big time because that's where we lift away the fear and we're in love. We are in the loving universal consciousness. Uh, <clears throat> my my um, challenge and everyone's challenge is to live more in that realm, in that timelessness, in that, in that uh, multidimensional space where we can be uh, relaxed and at home with almost any circumstance. Um, I'll never forget when I was uh, 16, I was just got my license and I was driving on a brand new highway that um, no one had driven on and all of a sudden I saw a car go up in the air and come down slam down and I screeched on my brakes going around and sure enough it was a car of novitiates they had this single car accident and I was the only other person there and I opened up the door of the driver and she was stuck in there and then I opened up the drawer of the passenger on the side and I helped her out and then I got the three passengers in the back out and the one that, that was driving I couldn't get her out and she seemed like she was not having any life so I, I wrangled it somehow and got her out laid her down and smacked her and screamed at her talk to me come alive you know, and I, I didn't know what to do. I'm a 16-year-old kid. Smack her chest, you know. Did everything I could to get her to breathe. And she came alive. Whoa. 
<laughs> we are there for everyone else. That's really basically it. They are us. Those novitiates were, I was one of them. <laughs> Crazy as that sounds. But yeah, we've come to the rescue of each other many times. We, we help each other much more than we realize. We, we are here for each other in many, many ways. Uh, we admire doctors who, 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 who uh, do wonderful things for our bodies, uh, nurses, um, all kinds of healthcare workers, bless them all. Uh, dentists, <laughs> My, you know, everybody hates the dentist, but I love dentists. They fix your teeth. It's really great to have good teeth. <laughs> Yay, they work. <laughs> it's wonderful. And um, the more we focus on our wellness and, and our bodies, it's, the more we are able to um, be in the receiving uh, conduit state of being, which is our natural, beautiful state. It's the state of all the animals. Look at them, a dog, a cat, a mouse, you know, they, they're in their oneness with nature and, and you know, all there is. They're not, they're not uh, harbored by doubts and fears. Yes, they have fears, but not of a paranoid state uh, of seriousness that makes us um, servants and gives away our power. Now that's a subject I could really expound on. It's giving away our power. And we are asked from day one to give away our power. Golly, we have to obey all the teachers and obey all the police people and all the supermarket people, and all, everybody. We are servants to a lot of rules. Another thing that makes me smile, when I went to Italy, they have so many rules, they can't even keep track of them. <laughs> and it's, it's almost funny because um, you, know, you can't possibly adhere to them all. They just made so many rules and filed them away and thought that's going to fix it. And meanwhile, they go up on the sidewalk around people and, and they just break all the rules. And that's the fun part. And we love it there. <laughs> but anyway, the um, topic that I was talking about where I held the grapevines, I held them, you know, so tightly. I just, just mm, loved them. I, I, I actually kissed them, you know, be one with those grapevines, and then impart that wonderful um, feeling to all the grapevines and to all the trees and all the, you know, all of life. Um, and I do this consciously with every child and with every person. That's the beauty of maybe what I'm doing today with you is I want to impart all my love to you, all my compassion and all my exuberance of the thrill of life, the, the swat of Eve, you know. This is wonderful to have this opportunity to hug you and kiss you and love you. Just like I love myself and there is no greater love, there is no greater gift than to love someone and some things and beings and everything. Love is a strange word. Um, I, I've actually uh, renamed it holy love because, uh, and I know it's a little, you know, off, but when you say holy love, it recognizes that this is not about ego and this is not about um, monetary gain or, you know, uh, I want you to love me back because I love you. That's all out the window. Holy love is stepping into where we are real givers to each other with all the resources that we can muster. And that's, that's the beautiful things. What, when, what you give is what you get. This is about opening up our, 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 ourselves. It's that simple. Opening up ourselves to receiving. You know, um, genetically, women, females are XX chromosomes, so they're receivers naturally, and their bodies are receivers, whereas men are XY chromosomes, and it's a little more difficult for us, because when we, we are in our male selves, we are more aggressive, we are, you know, bossy and egotistic, and, and we have uh, brawn and muscle, and we have to prove ourselves, and 
we have to go out and kill and you know, fight and, and that's just nothing wrong with it. I'm not, it's not putting it down. It's just that who, that's who we are. It's, it's, in, it's in us. The, the male of the species is always the, you know, the more aggressive. But we can open ourselves to being our feminine selves, our, our X chromosomes. And that's a beautiful step when we proactively do that. Uh, we proactively say to ourselves, I want to be a receiver. I want to hear my children. I want to hear my brother. I want to hear the person who works for me in the accounting department. How do they feel about these numbers today? Um, uh, that we just got news that uh, you know we're down 30% over, over last year. What do they think about that? Uh, and how are they going to talk to me about that? Um, and, and like, oh, if they were to say, oh, here, Stephen, here's your numbers. You're down 30%. Cheers. Uh, and, and sign it, you know, Ed. I mean, wait a second. Don't put cheers when you're giving me bad news. <laughs> I don't know. Is that an example? But I want them to feel what they're doing, be part of what they're doing, not just sitting at a desk typing numbers. I want them to see that everything we do adds to or subtracts from all there is. Yeah, care is a wonderful word. Um, I go very deeply into caring when it comes to diet and, uh, and, and caring about our bodies. Our bodies are holy temples for our, for our beautiful uh, uh, conduits, being conduits of spirit. Um, we, are, we are God. We are goddess. There are no more uh, advanced or more intelligent or more caring or more loving entities in all the universe. And that's a big thing to say. Most people don't think that. They don't even acknowledge that or even would go there. But it's very simple and it's very easy to understand because if we weren't, then we would have to be subservient and work for another entity that was outside of ourselves? I don't think so. We need to be the grand god and goddesses that we are and step up to that plate where that's who we are. We are the world. We are the earth. We are the moon. We are the stars. We are the kitten. We are the baby. We are everything, we are anything that is in our physical existence. Another beautiful uh, saying by Einstein is there is no matter, there's only energy. And this coincides with what I'm saying is that love is energy. And that's what we are, is love, loving universal consciousness. If there ever a real message that we need to learn today is we have to be together here. We're not going to get governments and corporations to fix the world for us. It ain't gonna happen. In fact, uh, I could expand on that so much. Um, you know, I have a quote in my book here from my friend David Suzuki, who basically says that the environmental uh, work that he devoted his whole life to has failed because the people have not understood the essence and the reason for acting upon it. And they've left it to governments. What, does, what do the governments do? They impose uh, taxes uh, for, car, for, you know, to, to curb carbon footprint. And what do the taxes do? They just make all the goods more expensive for us. <laughs> uh, that doesn't work. Um, and you know, they, with corporations, they are concerned about their bottom line. It's not even a human there. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a thing. Uh, so they, they're going to be relentless about the food we, we get to eat from their, from their production because they're going to make the best money they can on that food. And they, don't, they don't really have to, uh, have to account for it because they, they're not a person it's a corporation we need to grow our own food we need to take to take back our power 
I'm saying things that um, we've all experienced. We've all experienced in dreams and meditations and in actual life, which is it's beautiful. Um, again, it's acknowledging that we are multidimensional beings. We are not just in this 3D, three-dimensional state. It's our, it's our lowest vibrational platform is material plane. It is the material plane and material um, wanting, material quest to, to have material things, the, the best car, um, the nicest uh, coat, uh, the best shoes, whatever, you know, uh, 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 which is all fine and good. There's nothing wrong with that. But the point is, too much focus on the material plane takes us on a path of destruction. We cannot sustain this. It's not sustainable to take from our planet all the things we want. Okay? We need to lighten up on our wanting and go back down to being one with nature, one with ourselves, one with the earth, and a little less material, you know, wanting. It would be a whole lot of breath of fresh air, both for the planet and for ourselves, uh, especially with what we eat. Oh my goodness. Food production for the eight billion of us today is the single largest contributor to planet warming. And now we all know how important it is to look out about planet warming and planet change. It's, it's devastating. And by buying foods that are wrapped in plastic and that come from a mm, thousand miles away and that have to be shipped or air shipped, stop that. Let's, let's get, get smart. Take back our power again. Let's plant our own gardens. Let's buy locally. Let's, let's buy eggs from our neighbor who's raising chickens, you know, and instead of down at the, at the supermarket. Uh, so these are things that we can do, and, and it's all right at our fingertips, literally. We each eat three meals a day. Let's look and see if each of those meals, or most of that meal, those meals can be local. More important than anything, local local meals eventually when we will all get the hang of it they can be organic that's second local that's the most beautiful thing when we start to eat local not only is it so much better for the planet and our bodies but it's nutritional too they've shown that the the plants that grow around us where we live are the most um, conducive for our own health interesting How does a person speak about themselves, you know? And it's difficult for anyone to say something good about themselves. It's embarrassing. But if I had to say something, darn it, I would say, I have confidence in what I'm saying here. And it's more than just confidence. I'm saying stuff that has evolved through ah, eons. This is the real thing, you guys. This is the real essence of who we are. We are this loving universal consciousness. That is us. What we give to it and what we take from it is, is us. We are it. That's the whole um, beauty of it is that when we need to take, we can. It's, it, it, we can. That's, that we have that comfort. And when we need to give, we give. Uh, and that's also a comfort. We, we have the need in us all to give. It's a beautiful thing. There are grand teachings and grand sages that have been in our midst for thousands of years and always have been. And these teachings have somehow been hidden because maybe it's felt that we weren't ready for them, but I think we're ready for them. And I have to say too that I think it's almost urgent that we get a hold of ourselves now and be the grand beings that we are we can't afford the luxury of fooling around any longer. We are at a critical point here. In fact, I, 
this is, I hesitate to say this, but ice ages are brought about in a short number of years because they're exponential. When you have uh, forest fires, it takes down all the trees, and then the floods come, and the, and the, you know, the rivers uh, come up and, and demolish all of the houses along the rivers, and thousands of people are homeless. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. Uh, an ice age can come about in a very short time. Uh, and I think it's started already, and it's heading that way. And I think it's important to, to think about how grave it is um, for us not to take back our power. Everything is important. Everything. Every word we say, everything we think, our dreams and, and, and our passions and our, and our uh, aspirations and all of that, we can mm, be the masters of ourselves. Be masters. We are masters. We don't have to go down a certain path just because, you know, Joe is doing it or Larry. We're ourselves. We're Steve. We're going to do our own thing, man. And that's, I think, really important. We've got to do our own thing now and be our own leaders. I won't let you down. And you won't let me down. We're one in this together. I'm just one person in it. But just consider one person as a microcosm of the entire universe, because that's exactly what we are, scientifically, provably, and in every respect. Our scientific makeup, the atoms that make up our cells, our little universes. This is the time to wake up to this, and it's the time that's a blessed time. Simply put, it's called the Book of One. It is the prophecy of all prophecies. It supersedes in every way because it is us. We are the universe. We are the grandness of the stars. When we speak to a star from the Lord God of our being, like I speak to my plants, the Lord God of Indeed, you're speaking to that star, and that star hears us and talks back to us and is happy for our communication. The moon, our enchantress, what a beautiful, beautiful blessing she is. The sun, Ra, in the great Egyptian tradition, Ra is our star. I'm proud to say I've been a sun gazer for now almost 25 years. I go barefoot on the earth, even in the winter, to be with Ra at the sunrise and at the sunset. These are two times when we can look at the sun directly without it hurting our eyes. And I've been doing it for 25 years. And when I go to my eye doctor, he says, Steve, your eyes are improving. <laughs> wow, doc, that's awesome because I'm looking straight at the sun. And he says, yeah, no problem with your eyes. So you can. And when you look at the sun, you don't just look at it. You become one with it, just like you come one with this plant, just like you come one with your lover one with your child, one with your boss, one with your teacher, whoever, whatever. It's, you know what oneness is. We know this. And oneness with our son, so beautiful. We get the messages they give to us. We've got to, yes, open and be receivers. We can do this. It's a proactive thing. We have to consciously say to ourselves, I want to be a conduit. I want to be a receiver. I want to know you, Ra. Look at you, how magnificent you are. Every plant loves you. Every animal loves you. Everyone loves you. There is love here. How could it be anything but love? And how would you know each of us individually if it were not that we were one? Because you are us, just as all the stars are us.
I will not let you down. And you will not let me down. The time now, time now is of the essence. We've gone a little too far. We've made a few too many mistakes, guys. We all have. We all drive cars. We know that we're burning fossil fuel. It took millions of years to make that. We all paved so many thousands of miles of roads with fossil fuel and tore up so much beautiful land. We filled in so many wetlands. We tore down so many trees. Those trees supply our air. I'm working with my architect now, designing beams that are stronger than steel, made out of hempcrete with fiberglass rebar. Fiberglass is, a, is an oil product, but that's a very minor part of the hemp and so much more renewable than taking our forests and our steel to build buildings. And we need to build buildings. Our population is growing at the fastest rate it's ever been. We're almost at 8 billion and it's expected to go to 10 billion in a very short time. How are we gonna build all these buildings? And are we gonna have two more billion people on the planet with new buildings that have to get their food long distance? I say no. I'm proposing in my little city of Kelowna, British Columbia, that we don't allow high-rise buildings with thousands of new families unless there's local food for each one of those families. If you build 10,000 units with three people per unit, that's 30,000 people eating three meals a day, that's 90,000 meals a day. And I'm saying to the mayor and to the council, let's not just approve these high-rise buildings and welcome people here because, I mean, how many 18-wheelers a day is, is it to feed 90,000 90, meals a day? That's a lot of stuff that we have to deal with. You can't deal with that. We have to have the local growers devoting part of their farms to permaculture rather than monoculture. Today, most of the farms here are growing apples and pears and cherries and grapes, whatever, and they export them, but they're not growing food. You know, we need uh, chickens and eggs and, and, and ducks and cows and, and vegetables and, oh gosh, all the stuff that we put on our plates, right? Why should that have to come from Mexico or China or the United States or wherever? Uh, all of whom are suffering from psh, depletion of the water levels and a lot of stuff. Not to mention how difficult transportation is today and how expensive it is. Uh, I'd say we need to come to grips with this uh, in a big way. This is a message that the world needs to hear, right? We all love recreation. We all just want to go skiing and have a good time and boating and swimming and playing with our kids, whatever. And that's fine. It's wonderful. But purpose, what's the underlying purpose of it? It's to be the grand beings that we are and to merge with the loving universal consciousness that we are and do it, not just talk about it. And don't give the power away to governments to do it or corporations to do it because they'll thank you very much, Bye 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 There's a big difference between our brains and our hearts. The brain is a wonderful tool, but it's not us. When we come from our hearts, come from our souls, come from our oneness, we know it's right. We don't think it's right. We know it's right. And this is the path that will take us out of this crisis. And it is a crisis. Our planet cannot tolerate the jabs and the, the abuse that we are giving it. And our governments, bless their hearts, they all are doing the best they can under a lot of pressure. They can't do it for us. We have to stand up now and become individuals, seeing our own purpose. Each of us has a grand purpose. Let's step into that.
bless the world all the love the holy love in all the world we're so grateful to have these bodies in this beautiful universe and this beautiful moment in our beautiful day shakyana vikimana vihigyana masman hazeh these are the words of thanks for our magnificent and loving universal consciousness that we all are indeed so be it indeed we want us all to get out of this crisis and flourish and be abundant abundant like nature abundance like we all know is the real way of life we can get that back and we deserve to get that back that's another wonderful idea here is being deserving being feeling that you are worthy <gasps> i love those words but that's the main thing bring back abundance we can do this it's in our hands again we eat three meals a day let's make sure those are local foods not wrapped in plastic and not shipped from a long distance those are things important they're important there's a whole lot of other things too but it can start with each of us having our our three meals a day my my beautiful friend chief judy wilson took my message about that to the to the conference that we just had on uh, climate warming and she spoke of it there on my behalf which is I'm so thankful to you chief judy thank you and i'm working with the first nations people to be the leaders the rightful leaders of growing our food locally um, because they are the, the the natural caretakers of the world and ha- looking at it um, from a bigger standpoint we are all indigenous every one of us there's no those are indigenous people and we're this and that no we're all indigenous people you know um so yeah i had a wonderful uh, wedding i went to with the uh, the groom brought ashes from scotland and said that these were ashes from the original fire that's been burning for over 4000 years <laughs> and the firekeeper kept them sacred that's from scotland i mean you would say oh that's guys a european no he is an indigenous person from you know an ancestry that goes way back thousands of years and we all are so yeah let's take back our power you guys let's take it back we can do this we can grow our own gardens uh we can we can love our children so much this is our most precious thing we have is our children and and show them that there's life out there not just looking at a screen every day all day and and being entertained stuff like that it's not easy to do the, the, the entertainment is terrific it's wonderful and, and and we all enjoy it we're all hooked but that word is also difficult i mean addictions and being hooked on things that's a huge detriment to where we need to go you guys addictions themselves ah oh, this is something that again we can rise to the occasion as my dad would say we can kick them It just takes courage fortitude and patience and courage is a, a great word I'll, i'll expound on that really quickly if i may is um i watch uh shows with my daughter esther and she's um she loves disney and we watch uh, cinderella of course and everyone's seen cinderella when cinderella's mommy passes away she calls cinderella over to her bedside the night before she died she said i want to impart three words to you my darling daughter courage to be yourself kindness to all others and a little bit of magic what is a conduit uh it means that you are 
willing to allow um, magic to flow through you. The magic of the moment, being in the moment. You know, that's the beautiful um, concept of the moment being everything. In the moment, there is no time and there is no place. We are all, you know, one in the moment. And a conduit is one who lives in the moment um, as a vessel of what they receive. And they are always receiving. We are always receiving. And we receive guidance. We know that we should look in our rearview mirror and make sure that the police are not going to stop us for speeding. <laughs> we know we get that we get that little that little jolt, and we get a lot of little jolts. Some of these jolts are life changing. That's being a conduit, uh, and we all get those. You know, we get these realizations or jolts or how would you term them? I don't know, but we get them. We all get them, and um, it's good to acknowledge them and to. And to realize that they're there and, um, and hear them and appreciate them and acknowledge them and proactively welcome them. If we shut them out, you know, it's our loss and it's a big loss to the loving universal consciousness because we can't give anything back. These are our jolts. This is our interpretation of, of the meaning of our experience and that's what we are as a collective of our experience you know the hundredth monkey it's an important word being a conduit conduit is uh, is a pipeline to to being divine all one for every beings and just a cool happy person that's all you really need to know actually conduits are generally in the moment and happy and spontaneous and abundant that's all we ever really need to know. We don't need any fancy words. It's that simple. Just think of being a conduit. Think of a, being a vessel, a vessel for peace, love, and abundance. And it works. I've been asked, how do you know that what you are saying is true? When we know something, it is forever. And we feel it. You feel it in your body. We can't tell a lie <laughs> without reacting. That's why lie detectors work. So yeah, true, false, or indifferent. We know when we are telling our truth. Our truth may not be our truth too. That I'll give you that too. But the question is, how do you know you're telling the truth? You know by because you feel it. You feel confident in it. You are understanding it, you are it. And a little side thing is I always got a kick out of the uh, story about a person putting a lie detector around a tree and then cutting down the tree next to it and watching the needle go crazy. Is these trees, <laughs> they're, more, they're more intelligent than we give them credit for, for sure. They knew that their buddy is being chopped down. And they don't like that. You do know it. The word no is absolute. The <clears throat> idea of achieving ascension while still in the body. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting to note that we all ascend when we leave the body. We ascend into different dimensions. We ascend in, into, uh, I don't want to say higher or lower because they're all equal. Um, but we ascend into um, knowingness on different planes of consciousness. The beauty of ascension in body is to know the levels and the, and, the, and the nuances and the glory of these plateaus and uh, consciousness levels and, 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 and realizations, whatever you want to call them. We are, again, divine beings where we understand how we actually made our bodies. We, we know all about our intestines and stuff like that. We know the stuff. This is absolute. We've made it. We've, we've evolved it. We can do this. This is not egotistical to say that. The real essence, to keep it simple as possible, is yes, ascension can be within everyone's grasp. All we need to know 
and uh, do proactively is to welcome our consciousness levels in all dimensions in the body doesn't mean you have to die in fact the more we rejoice in life the better it is we can easily get off on dying that's a cool trip lots of people love the idea of dying i've heard that every time a person does certain drugs it's the high is the dying of the brain cells whoa and Many of us have had near-death experiences. Also, fantastic high. I've had many of them, and I write about them in my All One Era book. And they were great lessons, and I love them. But I am now at a point where I hope every child can join me is to not focus on death. Heck with that. Hell with that. Focus on life. We can live in these bodies for hundreds of years. Whoa, Steve said that? Yeah, we can. Our aging process can be st stunted. Everything about us can be magnificent. We are unlimited, indeed. So be it.